there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today for Sketchbook Sunday, we're gonna do some crystal studies. I love to paint anything that's kind of translucent because I love seeing through the layers and I think watercolor is a really nice way to capture that. This video is brought to you by jerrysartorama.com and I'll be using the Turner watercolors today. They're the only American distributor for Turner watercolors and they have them at a very affordable price. So if you are looking to branch into artist quality watercolors but you're on a budget, definitely give them a try, especially the 18 color uh, intro set. It's got 18 small five milliliter tubes. Last I checked it was $22 I think for the 18 colors and it d does give you a really beautiful range. Uh, the only color here I'm using that isn't in the 18 color set I think is the rose red so um, it wouldn't hurt to grab that one on its own because it is a really versatile color. I'm starting off by wetting the entire chunk of crystals with clear water. I'm using a number 10 round brush that has a nice point on it so I can get into any details that I want and I'm adding gamboge and also some burnt sienna into the um, base part of the crystal and then on the amethyst I'm actually adding some rose red with a little bit of burnt sienna to kind of knock down the vibrancy a little bit. I'm adding a little bit of ultramarine blue to that to get me those purple hues and the interesting thing about this specimen was that it was very pink uh, rather than the purple amethyst that you're so used to seeing so I thought it was quite unique and um, interesting and I thought that would be a really uh, a really good one to do. Now because I have to wait for layers to dry I thought I would work on another subject as well and I wanted to do an emerald. I've been I think with like St. Patrick's Day last week I was I had wanted to paint some emeralds but um, I just couldn't find a good reference image so I thought this would be a good opportunity to do that today and I'd have something to do while I was waiting for that first layer to dry. Now typically I would paint a bunch of small um, studies like this so that while the first one's drying I could work on the other ones but um, I've been having a lot of eye strain and I think it's because I downloaded a book to read on my phone so I couldn't find my tablet and just reading on that small screen really made my eyes tired and also it was making me kind of nauseous to focus in on something so small so um, I even though I wanted to do a bunch of crystals for sketchbook Sunday I just I just wasn't feeling uh, my eyes weren't feeling very well I was feeling kind of this is kind of sick to my stomach so I decided to just finish up these two and uh, call it a day and then you know give myself a little a little break and <laughs> take the rest of the Sunday off if you will um, so now that this bottom layer is dry, I did help it along with my heat tool, I'm going in with my darkest darks because I like to establish my values. So I like to do a unifying wash, which kind of makes everything kind of, that's to, to kind of harmonize everything, make something unified and whole. And then I like to go in with my darkest darks and that helps establish my values because once I get those out of the way that I don't fuss around so much. And I know a lot of watercolorists like to do layer by layer and that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I prefer to establish my values first because um, it lets me paint a little bit more quickly and I don't feel like it sacrifices the the finished quality. Um, you know, it, it all depends. Like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do something where I'm gonna do layer by layer and spend a lot of time and go for more of a realism, then I would actually do my sketch on scrap paper. I would refine that sketch, get it perfect, take my uh, take it down to my light box, and then I would transfer it onto my my uh, my final paper. So I would have like a <clears throat> extremely accurate uh, map of everything and then I would go in layer by layer but for sketchbook work I'm often doing more of a direct painting and um, this is just a nice a nice quick way to get those get things direct and fairly accurate in a in a shorter amount of time so if like you were painting um, out in the world you're out like painting in the landscape or you're out painting on location somewhere you've got to be mindful of your light changing and just you might be getting cold as you're outside painting in the winter or something like that and, and time is of the essence. So these this sketchbook work is also not only to um, refine my skills, it's also building my speed. So, um, you know, think about what your goals are where you're working in your sketchbook and try to um, use techniques that will help you build those skills, whether it be speed, realism, what have you. Keep in mind that your goals do not have to be the same from sketchbook to sketchbook or even from page to page within your sketchbook. So today's goal could be painting quickly. Tomorrow's goal could be uh, painting something really realistic. Uh, the next day's goal could be trying to paint birds at your bird feeder and you're just quickly sketching them as they land. So uh, find, you know, whatever is appealing to you when you're sitting down to work and just embrace that and go with the flow. Your sketchbook is not or doesn't have to be a finished work of art. Your sketchbook is part of your growth 
growth and um, staying excited about working in it and doing what you're presently um, inspired to do is really important so that you keep working in it. It's got to it's got to be something that it's got to be like exercise. It's got to be something that you can sustain doing it day after day, week after week. You don't want to make something that's going to be a chore and drudgery. You want to be able to have that playful aspect that's going to make you come back and keep working. Um, I'm still layering up the transparent color. If you look at my, my two water buckets there, I know one has a wicked glare on it. Sorry about that. Um, but the bigger jar is my dirty water. You can see that they're like the paint is on the paper. I'm not like really losing much in the water. And even though the dirty water does have some sediment in it, it's still very transparent. So that shows you how transparent these colors are. If I was using gouache or um, a chalky watercolor, you would definitely see chocolate milk there. It would not be clear like that. So I've had some people ask me if the Turner watercolors are transparent. I think they're very transparent. I think they're more transparent than, than the Lucas watercolors. Uh, I use those quite a bit, probably more often because they're convenient in the, the half pan sets that I have because they're in a palette and these I just have poured into pan, half pans and full pans and then I take them out of the palette and set them on like a metal tray to paint so it's just a little less convenient but as far as quality of the paint personally I prefer the Turner to the Lucas it's all depends on what you like the Lucas line I feel has more of like a vintage vibe so if I'm painting something that's like a say a reproduction vintage or Victorian postcard I would go for the Lucas because the colors are going to feel more earthy and um, subtle like that but the Turners I feel are much more bright. I've had some people um, compare the Turners to Holbein. I only have one small set of Holbein colors. I really, and I haven't used them as much as I should, so I can't really make a, a direct comparison. Um, the Holbein colors don't contain oxgall. I'm not sure if the Turners do. The Turners seem to flow pretty well, so I would think they probably have oxgall or a synthetic oxgall in there, but I can't say 100%. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. Um, but anyway, I'm just finishing off this by adding some uh, opaque white pen, a Posca pen. You could use a gel pen as well. And then just glazing on a little bit more where I feel like I need a little bit more translucent color. And that's pretty much it. My eyes were pretty much beat by this time. I needed to rest them, but I did get that little sketchbook work in and I'm happy for that. So there you can see it. Uh, it's still wet here because obviously I'm just picking it up and showing it to the camera, but it gives you a pretty, a pretty good look. And then here you'll see a photo of it dry. Thanks for watching. If you want the paints I use. You can find them at our sponsor, jerrysartorama.com. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. And until next time, happy crafting.